Okay guys, we just got some news on the shortages that we're dealing with, chip shortages around the world. Unfortunately, it's not good news. Understanding and analyzing data is critical, no matter what industry you're in. With Data Camp, you can learn data science today and apply it tomorrow. Acquire skills faster with over 300 courses and interactive learning experiences. If you've ever wanted to learn Python, they have a great course on an introduction to Python, or maybe you want to learn SQL and you can use their introduction to SQL course. Combine video classes with practical exercises and skills assignments to help guide you. The lessons are bite-sized and can fit your schedule, and their mobile version allows you to learn from anywhere. At Data Camp, subscriptions start at only $25 a month for unlimited access to their courses. So use my link in the description below and you can check out the first chapter of any course for free. All right, so the shortage about of graphics cards and CPUs is not, we've talked about this a bunch of times and I think a lot of people might still be a little bit lost on what's happening, but we've got a little bit more insight on when we can expect to see some uh, light at the end of the tunnel. The problem is I feel like we still are just entering the tunnel. And the reason for that is uh, TSMC just had its investor call. What is an investor call? Well, when you're an investor, you're privy to information directly from the company in which you're investing. They usually will do it quarterly. Sometimes it's annually, depending on the way the investments are set up. But that, I digress, besides the point. The CEO from TSMC just had its investor call where that information becomes public because it is a publicly traded company. And so they give you some insights as to what's happening, what's happened in the past, what are the what are the trajectories? Where's the business? Uh, you know, what direction is the ship heading? And is it heading in a ship that you want to continue investing in? So one of the things that obviously is gonna be on the top mind or the mind of any of the top investors, especially with a company like Intel or TSMC, which by the way, are the two major manufacturers of SOCs, chips, uh, semiconductors, all that sort of stuff, basically said that uh, things are obviously a little bit dry at the moment. There is a huge demand and they don't necessarily see that ending anytime soon. In fact, rather than just sort of paraphrase, I'll go ahead and give you some direct quotes here. Um, these are quotes from TSMC's CEO. Now they told investors during its earnings call that the company had not ruled out ship shortages, shortages extending into 2022. Now, if you've been paying attention, you know that 2020, when the uh, new graphics card from uh, new graphics cards from NVIDIA, obviously 30 series launched, and then new stuff, uh, you know, RDNA 2 launched from AMD, they obviously were paper launches, according to people, because the demand dr dramatically outweighed the amount of supply. Ergo, supply and demand, which is a very basic concept when it comes to the market. However, TSMC is the major manufacturer for all things Intel, or excuse me, no, not Intel. Intel's all things manufacturing for Intel. They're their, they're their own um, production facility. But TSMC is the major manufacturer, not just for AMD's Ryzen CPUs and uh, Radeon GPUs, but many other customers, a lot of them much smaller than AMD and whatnot, but major customers in the automotive industry, um, custom circuits and boards that are designed for custom machinery, all sorts of things. And so what they basically said here is, um, so they were asked how long this is gonna go on. And their, their response was, well, Goku, that's the person who asked, asked, I guess, let me answer the question carefully because we cannot rule out the possibility of inventory correction or overbooking, something like that. So what they're saying is they can't rule out the possibility of demand continuing to exceed the supply, which is where we are obviously right now. Now it was obviously exacerbated by, exacerbated by the pandemic but all that did was create a greater demand at a time when production was ramped down. Now that did not trigger necessarily the shortage of SOCs right now and, and micro uh, semiconductors, but it obviously contributed to the problem. They said, but actually we expect the structural demand to continue and we will work with our customer closely actually to develop some technology solution to meet customers requirements and create differentiation and long lasting value to our customer. As a result, actually, we see the demand continue to be high and the shortage will continue throughout this year and may be extended into 2022 also. So what they are saying is a very, very, uh, probably lawyer friendly wording of demand is going to continue to be higher than our production. Now what they're doing about this, and Intel's basically saying the same thing. They are ramping up production. They are creating new production facilities. The problem is it takes several years to ramp up those facilities. This is something that TSMC saw coming uh, a while ago and they started to create new production plants. However, you can imagine the amount of uh, complexity that there is to creating and building robots that build other robots to build your stuff is extremely time consuming. Now imagine 
there's a shortage of these chips and stuff, which means you are gonna have a hard time also creating for yourself because you now have to make this decision of how much of the stuff that you're creating in terms of you know building chips are gonna be needed. Do you know how many chips are probably used in a chip creating factory? Like that's probably an insane number I would have to imagine. So you've got the people knocking down your door to get your product when well, you need your own product to build their product. So we're in a really interesting time and it's obviously been compounded by the fact that everything we use today has microchips in them. Now TSMC isn't the only one going through this. Foxconn has gone through this. Remember some of the iPhone shortages, but you know, it's funny how they're able to ramp up obviously to a, a very large capacity. Um, Sam, Samsung also manufactures chips. Intel also manufactures chips. In fact, Intel also uh, had a statement for this. This is from uh, Pat uh, Gelsinger. Basically they said um, they have the same concerns over sh chip shortages. They said, we do believe we have the ability to help. I think it's a couple of years until you are totally able to address it. It just takes a couple of years to build capacity. Now that may sound like, as gamers, you might be like, what do you mean a couple of years? If you think about the complexity of these factories, to build one in a couple of years is actually a pretty monumental task, and I think it's actually quite impressive. So let's talk about what this means now for gamers. They basically were saying here, um, the automotive industry is one of the industries that's leaning on this the hardest. It's kind of creating the shortage in the sense that automobiles are having more computers in them than ever. The major push for all electric cars means that you're seeing a lot more smart features built into them which have different computers to control different things. It's not just one computer that controls everything. You have your engine computer, you have a transmission computer if it's a gas-powered engine. You have your, uh, your, your Heck, in my Camaro, I have a differential computer because it's an e-diff. You've got um, your body control modules which control things like lights and door locks and windows. And then you've got your ABS module which is independent from everything else for your automatic brakes. You've got your airbag module which is separate from all of that stuff and, and redundant and backed up because obviously it's a safety feature. So you think about all of these different chips that go into uh, making an automobile and how many automobile manufacturers now are making these very advanced cars you can see how uh, it all kind of came at a time when it sort of just intersected where we are right now with the pandemic and the demand creating this shortage. Now, gamers are going to continue to have to deal with things like the New Egg Shuffle, um, the, the uh, EVGA program where you can sign up and basically it's, it's like first come first serve on getting your graphics card. You get notified, you have so much time to respond, you get to buy your card, off you go. But that also means that you're going to be de dealing with scalpers for a long time because this is also a huge scalping opportunity. You get your hands on a, you know, a shiny 30 series card, it's like be basically being handed its weight in gold. And considering how heavy some of the cards are, that's a very hefty amount of gold. And it's unfortunate because that's where opportunists um, look for these opportunities and they always have their ears to the ground and you guys already know this They will jump from industry to industry whether it would be shoes or headphones or uh, Now graphics cards and PC components because anywhere there's a shortage and a high demand you have opportunity for profit And that's unfortunately what we're dealing with now I mean this there are companies out there that are doing everything they can to sort of combat that but at the same time it's an opportunity for some of these companies to also kind of stay afloat by increasing prices now here's, here's where I think this is a double-edged sword when it comes to, oh my God, Jay is agreeing with them increasing the prices. No, I'm saying I understand the way the market works. Let's say you're you know, XYZ graphics card company and you have to keep you know, your staff going, your warehouse going and all that, but you don't have product to sell in the volumes of which you're used to, which means that you can't keep paying the bills. So you have a choice to make. Do you start laying off people? Do you start closing distribution centers or warehouses? Or do you start to increase pricing to keep things basically across the board the same with lower volume bringing in at least the bare minimum you need to stay operational? So that's just the way um, you know, it, operations work. And I think most people watching this video could actually understand that. It sucks. It's obviously not something anyone's looking forward to. And this news, unfortunately, makes there be a lot more incentive for scalpers to continue hitting hard to try and get these graphics cards wherever they can so that they can also keep the prices up and you know, two, three times their, their MSRP value now at street value, making things just look really bad for gamers here in the near future. You know, I, I wish I could say 
We as gamers, we should band together and do something. But what are you gonna do? I mean, there's absolutely nothing you can do. I don't want to say gamers are low on the totem pole when it comes to the priority, because obviously it's like, it's like a colony of ants, right? One ant or 10 ants by itself is pretty insignificant. But when you got millions of ants, they could carry away a freaking cow if they want. So there's obviously a huge market for that. I mean, companies like AMD and NVIDIA obviously highly lean on gamers when it comes to making up a huge portion of their market. Uh, but a lot of these companies have also started diversifying into other fields like NVIDIA getting into smart cars and obviously AI and, and uh, you know, what, machine learning. And they've made that a huge focus for them. But they also all rely on the same products in which you are having a very hard time getting your hands on, especially raw materials to make your product. AMD is not happy about the fact that TSMC can't produce the product that they're that they're buying from them fast enough so that they can get them into the hands of consumers uh, to, you know, obviously bolster their brand. And this probably couldn't come at a worse time for AMD because they were making severe headway on taking back market share from both Nvidia and Intel when it comes to their graphics and their CPUs. I mean, since we saw the, the, the Ryzen uh, CPU launch back in 2016, it has been an absolute force to be reckoned with in terms of just making right decisions, right choices, making an amazing product and winning back the trust of the consumer now you have consumers that are basically buying anything they get their hands on, whether it be Intel or AMD, because you don't know whether or not you're going to have an opportunity to buy any product in the near future. And if this continues on to 2022, well, that's just going to suck. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of bring you this little bit of a news piece, letting you guys know. Um, I've seen people say just just one more month or two and it's going to be back to normal. No, that, I mean, they're. You can see these CEOs are preparing you for, you know, this could be around for a while and definitely into 2022. It will end. It will come back to normal once these other uh, manufacturing facilities come online. Unfortunately, it just takes time for those to be built. You can't just snap your finger and have a production plant be up and running. It's not like SimCity. You can't just drop one. It takes time. Okay. Speaking of time, we've got some time left, obviously, in our giveaway. You can't get your hands on these graphics cards, but I am giving away two of them and I'll tell you more about it right here. Before you close that video, guys, I am doing another graphics card giveaway. Because things suck in terms of trying to buy them, I want to be able to give someone out there an upgrade or a graphics card that's missing out of their system. So click the link in the description below that talks all about our giveaway and you can find out how you can win either our Gigabyte RTX 3080 or our second place winner will get an RTX 2080. So good luck, click down below to learn more.